Okay, this is uh, Econodermata 2, and here are the five uh, classes that we left off with that you need to know. And the first of these is the class Asteroidians. Okay, Asteroidia. The Asteroidians are starfish, your true typical starfish, um, multi armed, crown of thorns star, starfish from Kermanex we haven't seen before. Here's a pin cushion star. Uh, or also known as a firebrick, firebrick starfish, and that is uh, one that Geezer took at Volkner Rocks. Um, and so here we'll look at the basic structure of asteroidians. Uh, the, your classic starfish, uh, usually five arms, um, often not five arms, but if they don't have five arms, it's usually either a multiple of five or at least a prime number. So usually uh, they'll either have five, seven, eleven, thirteen arms, funny enough. Uh, okay, so the, the prime numbers, and but uh, pentamerous radial symmetry, so based around five axes radiating out from the center like spokes of a, from a wheel. And they've got this, uh, the tube feet that we've talked about, which are the, um, uh, the suckers from the water vascular system a mouth in the center and this ambulacral groove okay so this is something something that is said to be ambulatory is something that can walk all right something that can get itself around and um ambul perambulation okay that's a walk or a perambulator is an old name for a for a child's buggy uh that's when you take the kid out for a walk so anyway ambulacral groove is the walking groove and uh that's where the tube feet will come out Okay. Uh, here is a close-up of the skin of a starfish, and it's quite amazing how much stuff is going on when you look at the a starfish. They are um, quite complex. Okay, it's not as smooth as our skin. They've got loads of different structures on the skin. Um, they might have spines. They might not. Okay, but they're the spiny ones will have these. Um, central uh, spines coming up from the ossicles. Okay, they've got these uh, finger-like projections which uh, allow water from the inside of the starfish to come up, be circulated around as the starfish moves, uh, contractions and relaxations of the body will m cause the water to circulate up in the air. And so it allows Again, with lots of surface area, like we've seen in ciliated um, surfaces and other highly folded surface area surfaces, then we see that there's a lot of area for gas exchange and waste exchange. And this is exactly how uh, starfish um, get their oxygen and often, uh, for the most part, remove a lot of the nitrogenous wastes, the wheeze, if you will, of the organism. Okay, and then also these things called, uh, these little pinchers called pedicillaria, which we'll look at um, further. And um, hopefully you'll take the time to have a good long look at these in lab. We'll be looking at 11-armed starfish that have all of these structures. Okay, so here are the pedicillaria. All right, if you notice when you look at a starfish, or really, let's take a step back one further. If you notice any hard structure that you put into the water in a marine environment, leave it there for about five months, two months, even a, a few weeks, and uh, you'll notice that there'll be various um, levels of other stuff growing on it and crusting it. And so it's a very corrosive, but also very uh, environment in the salt water, but also a very um, uh, an area where space is at a premium so things can if they can settle on something and start growing there start filter feeding out the uh, water column then they probably will but you never see that on a starfish on the top of a starfish whereas bivalve shells and mollusk shells you often see sponges and little uh, other creatures that have settled onto those those um, those shells okay same with tube worms and the like but starfish, you don't see that, and that's because of these pedicillaria. 
All right, so they would have on these spines uh, uh, good places to um, settle, but these things are actually little uh, scissor-like, little claw-like graspers that can crunch up anything that, uh, or sort of bite and crunch up anything that settles onto the surface of the starfish. Okay, here's a picture of what they'll look like. So this one is, um, these ones are actually for biting and grasping fish. So there are a couple of these things that you that can give a nasty toxic bite. And you can see the the um, uh, the toothed hooked nature of these ones that fit together. Okay, so this is um, the fish catching pedicillaria of stylaster stylasterius. Okay, but uh, so this is one that is. Um, open wide, and these are ones. Okay, or the, these are ones that are open wide in a defensive position. And so this happens if the uh, starfish is stimulated. If you look at a 11 arm starfish, go down to the water and pick one up, and touch it, and you'll see that these things all come up ready for action. And whereas in the when it's relaxed, uh, if you haven't bothered it you'll often see that most of the pedicillaria are down in a um, non-defensive uh, position and they're all just quite relaxed, whereas these things are ready to, to snap away. And when we go to lab and we look at the pedicillaria on the surface of the uh, starfish, we can poke these things with pins or um, probes and we can watch as these things start to snap away. Okay, those are pedicillaria. Here's the um, surface of an 11 arm starfish, and you can see, well, there's the mandrapori right there, but you can see all the uh, little pedicillaria around the spines in a relaxed position. And um, when we look under the microscope, we'll be able to see the um, other pedicillaria that live around in between these, sp these spinal ones. Okay, and there are a few echinoids, uh, which are, are echinoderms, but, uh, that are, but they're lethal to the touch. They have pedicillaria that inject a neurotoxin, which happens to paralyze mammalian muscles. So toxonustes, toxonustes is a one species that's uh, feared by pearl divers. But the real target is some marine predator or fowling organisms. They don't, they're not trying to kill mammals. Okay. Um... So again, like we were talking about, they have the furrow called the ambulacral groove, which has um, rows of tube feet that stick out. And I encourage you to go to those, um, those uh, YouTube websites and watch the tube feet in action and watch them in action when we're looking at the um, aquaria in lab. And they've got rows of spines to protect that ambulacral groove. So here we go. Okay, so here are all the ambulacral spines. Okay, so these are spines that come off of the um, ossicles. And here are the tube feet that are housed within that ambulacral groove. Okay, remember the walking groove. And the tube feet can poke out, jut out from here, and then you'll see the spines uh, that can fold in and protect that groove. So nothing can come in and just start nipping away at these feet because they are food after all that's a um that's um organic material that would it's it would be quite nutritious if things could eat it okay so one thing that you can do to explore this is you can take a starfish and run your finger p turn it over when you're down at the water uh run your finger or a probe or or a pencil or your dive knife or something down the, in, the uh, interior of this groove, the center of the groove, and watch how these spines close up and overlap uh, over each other um, to protect that ambulacral groove. Oh, there you go. Let's see if you can tell us what uh, phyla are represented. Okay, here's another uh, video of uh, this one will be of a starfish eating, I believe. Okay, and if we look at the cutaway, uh, there's your ambulacral groove, but if we look at the cutaway of the organism, you'll see the water vascular system radiating down. And then uh, gonads, which um, at certain times of the year, if you cut open a starfish, they will be just absolutely jam-packed with eggs. 
that are edible. I've known a couple. I know a couple of Maori that eat um, uh, uh, starfish eggs, and we've I've tried them while I've been um, hanging out with them, uh, with these guys, and uh, they're not bad. They're quite a bit like a kina, but with a bit of a more bitter aftertaste, but not too bad. Anyway, I encourage you give it a try. Um, about uh, a little bit later on in the year, about third term, if you find 11 arm starfish and cut up, cut them up, and they'll be absolutely jam packed with with eggs. All right, and then they've also got these things, these digestive glands, which are known as pyloric cica, and we'll look at those a little more closely. Um, but you'll notice that these digestive glands fill up nearly the whole arm and you can replicate that throughout each of these arms okay they're just it's not just down one arm it's only d illustrated down this one arm to show that um, digestive gland uh, or to be able to show the other or, uh, organs that exist in that in that arm in the arm but of course these digestive glands uh, would be and all of these um, all of these organs would be in each of the arms and since they are pentaradially symmetrical of course each of them is going to look exactly the same so they'll have all the same uh, parts okay so here is a picture of a starfish eating a mussel okay and so what it's done is it's come up it's grabbed the mussel and what it'll do you can see these two feet grasped onto the muscle and it's pulling 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 apart as hard as it can and the muscle is closed trying to stay closed as hard as it can and it's a little war and the war means uh, death for the muscle if it loses so if it can pull but the starfish what it'll do it pulls apart this this thing and if it can get a crack even a tenth of a millimeter wide uh, it can it's it can avert its stomach, which means that it can un. Um, let's see, what's how would I say it? It can turn its stomach inside out and have it come out through the mouth, uh, slip inside the muscle, start pumping out massive amounts of digestive juices, and digest the muscle within its own shell. And so then it can just slurp up all of the the digested tissue of the muscle. And so these things are very efficient predators. All they have to do is be able to pull these things apart just a little bit and then they're they're in. Okay. Um let's have a look at the digestive system. They have this pyloric cica, which is that feathery thing that we were talking about before. And they're huge because a lot of the um the digestion happens outside of the body and so when you have something where you're using your in, your digestive enzymes outside the body then of course more dilution can take place and so you need to uh, be able to produce lots and lots of digestive enzymes so they're sloppy eaters essentially but um so they pump out massive amounts of digestive enzymes okay they have a large stomach the cardiac stomach which is uh, close to the oral surface. That's the one that can um, be uh, turned inside out, averted out through the mouth. And they also have the pyloric stomach, which does uh, secondary digestion, and that one stays inside the, the body of the starfish. Okay, and so we've covered the rest of that slide. All right, they're predominantly dioecious which means that they have uh, both male and female uh, um, individuals as adults. And like we said before, the gonads uh, go fill the arm, nearly completely fill the arm prior to spawning. Um, but during when they're not spawning, you'll see that they're just uh, small little structures that are uh, just spindly little, uh, stringy little uh, structures that are very thin. The broadcast spawn, um, depending on, well, there are lots of environmental cues that may cause them to broadcast spawn, and they may produce as many as two and a half million eggs. So these are um, 
uh, prolific breeders. Okay, here's a cushion star emitting um, a trail of sperm out through the oviduct. And you'll see here's a uh, classic breeding um, posture. You can see the uh, the um, either sperm or eggs being emitted here, and uh, they do arch up in this in this position when they're um, breeding. Uh, but you also do that when they're feeding. So hard to know exactly whether they're feeding or breeding. And here's a rare picture of a starfish um, releasing eggs. Okay. Asexually, they can reproduce as well. They can um, split into two. And so if you go and, um, uh, as, and cut a starfish in two, they'll probably grow into two or they'll probably grow into two different uh, starfish. Um, so essentially all that you have to do, all that has to be left is one-fifth of the central disc. A little bit of that, that uh, radial canal, or sorry, the uh, uh, ring canal in the center needs to be left and they can grow a new body provided they've got enough uh, reserves. So that leads to images like this, which looks like this thing has been working out, but in fact, with a giant arm, but in fact this is what would have been left of this uh, starfish arm and it's regrown the other arms. And some of this, some of them actually do this by preference, and you'll see loads of these at uh, Pilot Bay. If you um, dive between the boat ramp and the Maori Warrior, on that uh, bank, you'll see lots and lots of starfish like this that when there are a lot of uh, um, resources available, they can just split in two and then grow a new uh, set of arms on the other side. Okay, so both this would have been uh, uh, two star, or this would have been one starfish with big arms, and then it splits in two and then grow, and both sides will grow new arms. Okay, so it's a quick way to make a lot of copies of yourself. And that is um, the end of Asteroidians, and we'll move on to Ophiroidians next.